Up today, we're going to be speaking with a truly dynamic duo of six-time NBA All-Star Blake Griffin and former NFL center and three-time All-Pro Ryan Khalil. They've transitioned from sports into the realm of entertainment with their Los Angeles-based production company, Mortal Media. The powerhouse duo is making waves, securing a multi-year deal with Sony Pictures and even investing in an innovative animation studio. Blake and Ryan, so great to see you guys. How are you doing today? Great. Thanks for having us. Doing good. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So... Before we kind of dive into what you're working on, would love to hear about the transition from sports into business. Um, I've worked with several athletes who've kind of gotten to the business world. Kevin Durant is an investor in uh, our company, Susie. And, you know, I know that sometimes it can be a little bit of a treacherous transition just from, from all the stigmas and things involved from being in professional sports to business. Would love to hear from both of you individually about kind of that journey, if it overlapped with your professional careers and kind of how it led you to where you are today. So why don't we start with you, Ryan, and then we'll, we'll jump into Blake. Yeah, you know, I think like anything, we all sort of start out as rookies and um, Blake and I have had long careers to really reflect on. And, and, um, and even while we were playing, Blake and I, as long as we've been friends, have shared a lot of what we've learned through our journeys and, and applied that to our own respective sports and really have tried to do that off the court and off the field as well. And so for us, you know, it's something, this, this, um, this endeavor is something that we're very passionate about. And so the first thing we sort of did was sit down and say, well, what made us successful in sports and how can we apply that to this? And Really, from day one, we've done that. We've we've uh, removed all egos. We've, you know, both Blake and I have great work ethics and and know that just like anything, it's going to take a lot of work. And and really, in the early days, we were just sponges running around town trying to meet as many people as we could. You know, successful people, people we looked up to, trying to find mentors and and really just learn. And um, and we did that for a long time. So it's funny, you know, we've, we've had some success now and, and we've been able to get some projects up and running and we'll have a lot of people come to us and sort of ask us for help themselves and what, what the shortcut is, but it really, there's no secret sauce. It, it's, it's putting your head down, it's going to work and, and, um, and doing it to the best of your ability. Yeah. And Blake, at what point during your MBA career, did you start thinking about, I guess, what was next um, and more specifically the world of entertainment? Oh, man, I started thinking about what was next uh, my rookie year. We, we do this thing wow. called the transition program. And, and they had, at the time, you know, a lot of the, those documentaries were coming out about broke athletes and, and everything. Yeah. They had uh, older basketball players come speak to us about, you know, average careers, three and a half years. You got to do this, you got to do that. And it sort of scared me in a, in a good way. Um, to start looking at stuff like that. That's not to say I immediately uh, applied that, but it was sort of a thought. And um, Ryan and I started talking about this in summer of 2015, I think it was. Um, and like you said, like zero shortcuts. I think one of the best things for us that right away was the one thing we knew was what we didn't know. And we it just kind of allowed us, like on the flip side of also being sort of a rookie in this new space, like it allowed us to ask those questions that some people might not ask. And right. You didn't have the curse of knowledge, so to speak. Exactly. So it was like, and honestly, to that point, it, it allowed us to sort of innovate a little bit in our methodology and how we went about things because we could, we sort of kind of came into it a little bit naive and yeah. uh, were able to get away with sort of more traditional or seasoned producers saying, well, that's not how you do it. And us sort of asking, well, why, you know, right. and then going about it. Yeah. And how do you guys know each other? We met through mutual just, friends. I think it's Orthworld, mutual friends. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I, mean, I think we so, met along like 2000, maybe 10, I think it was when we first met. Yeah. Got it. So I guess walk me through how Mortal Media came to be in, in 2015. What was the first step you took to launch the business? Um, and why entertainment? And, and what was the vision behind the, the business? Well, I, the, the, the short of it is, you know, even though Blake and I had been friends for some time, neither of us really knew that the other were pursuing this in, in our respective off seasons. And, um, it really, the two of us coming together didn't happen until, um, Thomas Toll of legendary who knew us both what was sort of really enamored with how we were going about it. And I think, you know, there's a lot of athletes who like the idea of playing in the movie business. And, and I think for, 
many of them, it's more of a vanity thing and they like the idea of putting their name on a poster. But Rick and I were really spending a lot of time uh, running around trying to understand the business and, and really figure out how we could best um, be effective. And, and, um, and so Thomas was the one that sort of suggested, you know, I really like the way you guys talk about it. I really like the way you guys approach it. I think it'd be different than maybe other athletes trying to transition. I think it'd be interesting if you guys did it here at Legendary. And so he sort of gave us our first look deal. Blake and I um, met with him. We had dinner that night and we just sort of, Blake and I just sort of uh, ping pong back and forth, you know, what a company might look like, how we might do it differently, uh, you know, we, we sort of really laid out a lot of uh, uh, the challenges that were going to be ahead. And one of the biggest ones was knowing that we were going to be fighting a, a stigma of being athletes and being outsiders. Right. And um, and so we really kind of put a plan in place and and just hit the ground running. And um, and yeah, that's sort of that's sort of how it came to be. So and what is it? What was it about, I guess, the original pitch or vision that was and, and is different. Like, what are some of the ways that both you guys see the world different when it comes to the entertainment landscape? Well, I think just for, for one, like our, our biggest thing that we talked about early on was um, establishing that this was like something that we, I think the way that we got into it was like, hey, for the first couple of years, we're just gonna be meeting people. We're gonna try to get into rooms. We're gonna try to impress people with our, our knowledge. and. And not just like Ryan said earlier, trying to slap our name on something and, and right. get media release out there and say, oh, we have a production company. I don't think people really knew we had this um, publicly until maybe like a couple of years ago or maybe when we started like releasing that we had some, sold some projects here and there. But even then, we didn't do much around it. Um, and for us, it was very important to make sure that people knew that this was something we were passionate about first, first and foremost. Um, and for us, like a lot of times when we're looking at projects or we have, we come up with ideas, it's, would we watch this? And I know that's so elementary and it sounds somewhat corny, but like it has to start with that because of course. Day, we haven't, we have not, you know, accepted anything that, that we, we didn't feel very, very, very strongly about. And the beautiful thing of it is, is if something didn't go early on, we've now been able to come back to some other stuff now that we've had a very small amount of, of success and, and got a couple of things off the ground. So um, really like uh, it's sort of forever, it's forever evolving um, just because, you know, after we got these first two things made, we, we Ryan and I are sort of talking and we're like, man, like I wish we had trusted our instincts on this or I wish we had done this. And it's all just yeah. like important learning, learning lessons for us um, just because, you know, when you're making something that you're passionate about, you don't want to cut corners. So I think like at the base of our, our company's uh, values, um, it's, it's really like having a lot of passion for what we're doing. And, and as we gain more and more experience, as we gain more and more credibility, it's about, you know, really, you know, putting our foot down when we see something creatively. Um, Ryan and I met in the beginning of the summer when I first got back and he was like, I mean, that's like, we have, it. we have these instincts. We all have instincts. And if we don't feel like something's working, then like this be, let's be more bullish about it. And like, like let's yeah. make sure that we, we voice our opinion. Um, because for the sake of art, for the sake of making something, you know, great, like you don't ever want to have to sit back and be like, man, I wish I'd said that. Um, so yeah. You need conviction in what you're doing. Right. Yeah. And then on the, and then on the business side, I would say, you know, we talk about, knowing our challenges of the athlete stigma. And, and so with the sports background, we, we knew early on, we were going to sort of be pigeonholed into only be able to play in the sandbox of sports related content. And so, exactly. and true to that, everything we were sort of being sent was the next Rudy, the next Hoosiers, the next, you know, whatever, with the exception of white man can't jump, we've really tried to um, explore uh, genres and things that, Blake and I both love and all the touchstones and things that we, that really uh, inspired us to get into this. But in, in the sports background, we did sort of lean into our experiences and our, our strengths and what we've been able to accomplish in that career. And so, you know, when you really look at the entertainment business, there is a lot of crossover 
And, you know, ultimately the job of a producer is to sort of be GM. And Blake and yeah. I always joke with our respective sports and teams, you know, how we would do things differently if we were GM. And this is the perfect opportunity to do that. And so we are sort of putting the team together, so to speak. And, and, um, and we're managing a long, long season that nobody gets to see. And, uh, and we're having to deal with a lot of different kinds of personalities, which we've done for many years in, right. in the sport right. world. Um, and so it's, it's a grind every single day. It's a grind and it's a long, long road. And, and, um, so there's that. And then also too, you know, Blake and I failed time and time again, this town isn't short of rejection. And so we, there's a resiliency we've built up over the years that we're able to apply to this. And so we don't get discouraged easily and we're able to fail and quickly learn from it and, and push on. And, and so that's something that I think has been different. And at least I see that we, that has sort of been our, our strength, um, that maybe the next company might not have. So the, the parallels to sports and, and business, um, are clear, uh, whether it be, you know, conviction or resiliency or leadership or building the right team. And I totally see how those parallels, um, really come in handy as you continue to build this business. You'd mentioned a couple of the original projects that kind of got the business off the ground. Um, talk to me about what those projects were, uh, what you learned from them and how they're helping drive your vision for the future of mortal media. Well, like Blake said, we, you know, the first few years we really spent, um, sort of being students again. And, yeah. uh, so we didn't really, we didn't really, there wasn't a lot of projects that got off the ground. Um, Blake and I really tried to, um, come up with, um, concepts in house that we could then go out and find those with, with real skill sets in writing and storytelling to help us, uh, build out. And then we also met with a lot of writers and creatives who had ideas of their own that we got really excited about and, and sort of said, we'll do anything to help shepherd this idea and be a part sure. of it. Um, so again, there's a lot of projects that we sold around town, um, off the of pitches, you know, um, uh, proof of concepts that we built out, um, that we never, you know, we didn't really, we didn't hire a PR firm early on. We just sort of said, we're going to keep our head down and, and really try to figure this out. And so we thought that was sort of the pinnacle once you sold something, which is, which is a feat in and of itself. But then there's the whole development process. There's right. the, 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 what, what else can you bring to this to make it sort of a whole package that we could then green light. Um, so that was a whole nother phase that we had to try to learn that we realized pretty quickly, oh, you don't you don't just sell a pitch and now you're on a, you're on a golden paved road to production. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a ton of projects nobody knows about that. We set up stuff in comedy, stuff in sci-fi, um, TV shows, uh, features with some really talented, uh, seasoned, uh, veterans. Um, so hopefully one day we can go back to some of those, but those sort of those, those projects that no one, uh, saw on the trades or that nobody's ever heard of the town has. And so that allowed us to have more credibility in the next meetings that we, that we got going. And so, um, you know, our first big TV show was hello tomorrow for Apple TV starring Billy Crudup. Um, and then obviously with, uh, Kenny Barris and Calmatic and Jack Harlow, uh, we did white man can't jump. Um, but those were long, long tedious roads that sort of the projects that preceded that were able to help us get it closer to the next phase of that, which is green lighting. Right. They talk about kind of an overnight success, uh, years in the making. And it sounds like it's very much a story here. It's people don't mm -hmm. see all the losses that happen that don't make the headlines that lead to a project like white man can jump getting live. So I I'm a huge fan of both the original movie, um, and, and the remake, um, Talk to me about White Man Camp Jump and what it was like to be part of that project, um, why you had such passion for that project, and um, how that project has fared. Uh, yeah, it was, it was sort of interesting for us. We, we'd had a meeting with Kenya Barris, just a general meeting with Kenya Barris in 2017, um, and sort of just like talked about a lot of stuff. But we mentioned the idea of like how much sports has changed. You know, the original came out in 1992. That was before the Dream Team uh sort of put basketball on the map globally i mean we've obviously seen like how fashion has changed um but yet somehow we're still sort of having the same conversations around race um and, and yeah. they're going on in the world today um 
uh, I, that being one of my favorite movies growing up, and obviously because of basketball ties, it was also very interesting for me um, as somebody who comes from a, a mixed race family. Um, you know, in those conversations back and forth, and and sort of like always kind of wondering, like, is it really like? Does it really have to be like that? Um, so that was like the original attraction for us. We went through hoop after hoop after hoop. I mean, pitching to Kenya and getting a call on him saying like, I'm, you know, I'm doing a deal with Fox and we want this to be our first thing. Or, and then the Fox Disney merger and or Disney acquiring Fox. And, um, you just, you, it was like such a up and down, just like a roller coaster ride. And I remember like when we were, when we, the day we started filming, just kind of like looking at each other and like, wow, I can't believe this is actually like here. Um, and, and for us, we wanted to put a movie together that addressed all those things, like I said, and, and, um, the great thing about it, whether you're a fan of the original or, or you're a fan of the remake or not. Um, I think that the thing that we're very, most proud of is like the numbers, you know, the streaming kind of gives you a real idea of how, how something's doing, how many people are interested in watching it. And the streaming numbers have been great and, and who's Hulu Disney have been, been very pumped about it. So, um, all those things, like I said, were, were, were big learning lessons for us. And, um, you know, even when, when something happens, like Ryan says, I don't know that we necessarily consider it a loss. It's just kind of like, all right, we gotta, we gotta figure this out. Um, you know, as athletes, we've been so used to very direct criticism. You know, you go into a film room after a game and you just get absolutely chewed out. And I think that's something that we yeah, always or do. you read the, or you read the media the next day after a game, right? It's right. constant. <laughs> you try to avoid that a little bit more. You can't really avoid the coach, but. Um, yeah, you know, it's just, we always tell people like, Hey, like if something's not working, just, just tell us, like, you, you're not going to hurt our feelings. We've heard worse from a 10 year old kid in the stands than you can ever say to us. So, um, I think that's sort of been a, a positive for us too, is sort of having that, 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 that shell, um, that, you know, you're not really going to offend us, but it's just about, it's not about being right. It's about getting it right. And I think that's what we've sort of. Uh, attached ourselves to when it comes to, to yeah. this business. Well, listen, I mean, that was definitely a, a huge success from, I think, a, a pop culture standpoint is something that, um, you know, the, the remake I'd heard of over and over and over again. So obviously you broke through and you touched on a nerve of the zeitgeist w with that remake. And I think it definitely set you up to what you announced earlier this year, which was a multi-year first look development deal with, with Sony Pictures Entertainment, which must have been kind of a, I guess, a step back while we've accomplished something moment. I know it's always hard to look at it that way when you're in, you know, in the grind, but um, from an outside standpoint, it's a huge success and 0.001% of any production company ever really gets to that type of partnership with, with, with such a major partner. Um, Ryan, how did that come about? And, and what do you hope to build on with the Sony Pictures partnership moving forward? Uh, you know, I, I think... Um... The kinds of projects we've been developing sort of align with um, some of the brass here. And and um, honestly, I would say White Man Can't Jump's a big driver for that. You know, that that's such a touchstone in the culture. But it also, it's, the White Man Can't Jump was torn because it was, it was built for a younger audience. And so, and that it was an audience that we, I think, did a good job tapping into. And so... Younger audiences absolutely love the movie. Yeah. Um, older audiences were torn and mixed, which we knew going in, anytime you're going to touch a classic, it was going to happen. Of and course. so I think for someone like Sony and um, um, the success of that at Hulu, uh, I think for them was exciting for us to sort of try to replicate that kind of success and, and do that in other projects here. So. Um, you know, maybe it's the sports in us, you know, Blake and I have been so brainwashed by team first. So, you know, we, as exciting as it's been to have that announcement and to sign, we're, we're also like back in it, back in the grind, trying to do right, right what's next and, and really come up with a big win, um, here. And, and, um, and so that's what all our energy and focus has been on. So it's been, it's been tough to, uh, uh, to sort of celebrate that, that, uh, that next jump for us, but, um, but yeah, we're, we're just, we're eager to get going and, and, uh, and replicate some of that. Yeah. And of course, you know, Hollywood right now is in a kind of shaky spot with the writer's strike, um, and all the other complications that come along with it. Um, I imagine that is definitely impacting the way that you're approaching projects right now. Um, 
have you thought about going into like documentaries or other things that allow you to kind of, I guess, get around some of those restrictions that are, that come yeah, with? Yeah, I mean, and even prior to the work stoppage, we were, um, we were already way delved into all of that, uh, yeah. landscape. And so, um, you know, it, obviously our focus shifts to that where we're putting all our attention on that. Um, but there's still opportunity ability for us to keep setting things up in terms of, getting ready for once, uh, once a deal gets reached, that we can hit the ground running and, and get back to some of those other things that have kind of stole. Um, but yeah, we've been dabbling in it all and, and it's been fun and, and again, similar, but two different landscapes. And so we, Sony has an incredible team here, um, that we've been really getting to spend a lot of time with. So as much as it's been tough to feel like things have been stalled, we've also it's been nice to kind of have a break from the kind of hustle of running around, trying to sell projects and get projects set up to really sit down with a lot of the folks here and, and, and learn a ton. And yeah. we've already done that in a short period of time. So it's sort of been a blessing in disguise, at least for us in some aspects. Absolutely. And earlier this month, talking about keeping things moving forward, um, you all announced a, an investment in, um, Swaybox, which is an animation studio of Louisiana. Um, Blake, how did that come about? And what is it about animation that you thought made sense to add to your overall portfolio at Mortal Media? Well, animation has been something that we've been been super interested in. Ryan and I both have kids, um, like younger kids. And, and yeah. there's just always like a, there's always a need for, for things that families can watch together. And Ryan, Ryan brought this idea, uh, developed this relationship and brought this idea to me uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, and the first time I, I saw their their capabilities um, and, and how, how everything works. I was like blown away. Um, so this is just sort of a, a, a newer, fresher take on, on animation, cheaper, faster, um, which is never a bad thing for, for studios or for, for people putting in money. Um, so we, we've, we've developed a, a relationship with them um, and, and thought it was a good idea to, to sort of put our money where our mouth is a little bit and, and, and show, show again, show people that like, this is something we're all in on. Um, so we're, we're really excited about some projects we have going with them. Um, they they have the ability to, to do something special and, and we're excited about that. Absolutely. So, uh, so as we wrap up here, I mean, one thing that strikes me about both of you is you guys have had so much success in your professional careers, your professional sports careers, yet you both come off as so humble. Um, even the wins you've had to date, you're like, ah, that's not a big deal. We're focused on what's next. And that is in a world where so many young people who really haven't accomplished anything are flexing on Instagram, like they've made it. And I just think it's such a lesson for younger people. It's, it's, if you have the drive to create something, you never really feel like you've conquered the world and you can kind of kick your feet up. What, and I imagine that's a, also a, a great, um, lesson that you're teaching your kids as well. Um, what gives you both of you that that drive to continue to want to build something? Because this doesn't seem like it's a vanity project. This is something I feel like I'm talking to two entrepreneurs who haven't created anything in their lives yet. <laughs> and I, th I think that's really admirable. I just want to say that. But what gives you each of you that drive to continue to push? I mean, I think for, for me, and uh, I'll let Ryan speak for himself, but I think that's just it's kind of comes from our sports background. I mean, I, yeah, you know, you can have a good game, but it's professional sports is so like, what have you done for me lately? Like, right. how was your last game? Your last game is, is what you're, you're sort of known for. And even season to season, I remember finishing my rookie season and be like, oh, wow, I got that done. And then immediately, like the moment you have time to think, you're like, oh no, there's next year. I got to, I got to top last year. I got to keep going. Um, and if you don't put in the work, you don't have a good work ethic. You don't continue to, to, to keep your humility. Um, in line with your actual talent, like you're, you're not going to truly accomplish what you want. So uh, I think it's just sort of that background of like, there's going to be other people that are hustling. There's going to be other people that have great ideas. There's going to be other people that have relationships. So just because you've gotten one thing done or two things done, just because you had one good game, no one's going to just automatically hand you something. And I think that's kind of how we feel about this company is like, Sure, you can have a win here, but that doesn't guarantee you anything, anything, anything else for the future. So, um, even if you tell us like this can't be made, we're not just going to throw that away and never forget it or, and forget about it. We're gonna we're gonna keep going. So, um, yeah, that's just sort of been our mindset. 
Yeah. Ryan, anything to add on, on your conviction and your motivation? Yeah. I, and, and Blake and I share the sentiment, but I think, you know, the biggest thing is just defining pretty early what success is to you because, you know, life's full of peaks and valleys and, and sort of the arbitrary finish line changes. It changes mm-hmm. culturally. It changes personally. Um, and so, again, sports has been a great teacher for us. We both learned early on that riding the highs and lows, like a roller coaster, it's just not sustainable. It's just too hard on you emotionally and physically. And so it really is something that it took a long time. We're both guilty of it, but you sort of fall in love with the journey and fall in love with the process, not the results. And um, for Blake and I, we get excited about challenges. We get excited about um, coming to work and, and meeting new people and finding, uh, new collaborators and coming up with new ideas and working through serious and not so serious problems, um, and doing it to the best of our ability. And so for us, you know, that's what we try to do in the sports world. And, and obviously, um, you know, it, it's different, but it's also the same. And, um, you know, I, at the end of the day, if, if we're doing everything we can and, and we're using our talents and, and we're growing our, t- we're growing our um, talents and, and we're learning from our mistakes and we're enjoying the process, I mean, that's, that's a win for us. And so there really is, um, there's nothing for us to really kind of plant our flag into and say, that's it. That's the one. It's, right. it's, it is sort of the next, it's, it's, the, it's the next project. It's the next day. Um, and, uh, and, and just forcing yourself because it's hard, but forcing yourself to enjoy the process of it. Absolutely. So to wrap up here, I mean, is there one piece of advice that maybe each of you could share with our younger listeners here at the Speed of Culture podcast that maybe you're getting started at the beginning of their career and professional journey uh, that they can one day end up in the seats that you guys are today, even given the fact that you feel like that your journey is still being written, which I agree. What one piece of advice would you give? Let's start with you, Blake. Um... I think uh, for me, I guess this, 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 uh, I, whenever I talk to young kids, um, I, you know, youth programs and all that, I talk to young kids about like discipline. Um, I just feel like that's like goes such a long way. Respect and discipline are two things that my dad like early on just drilled into my head. Um, I always tell kids like, you know, it's a very, it's a very stupid thing, but I always say like to young athletes, like make your bed. Like making your bed is the very first thing you can do every day. It's an atta- a task that you can accomplish that like sets you on track to being disciplined throughout the day. Um, and I think that, that with anything like sports, the more detail and the more, the more attention you put into like the smallest details. And sometimes that stuff is very minute and very uh, mundane. Um, sure. The more, the more attention you can put into that, uh, the better off you'll be. And I think it's the same thing when you're creating a project um, if no detail is too important, uh, or is, if no detail is unimportant, then um, you've sort of thought of everything. You can sort of check that list off. So um, I think that's kind of like a mantra that I use professionally, personally, and in, in every different field is, is just be disciplined about it. And, and at the very beginning of that, you have to be passionate about something or discipline comes very, very hard. So Absolutely. make sure you're doing something you're passionate about and, and, if you are like, you don't want to look back and say, oh man, if I just like worked a little bit harder here or there, like don't let that be the excuse. Let every, let everything else externally be the excuse. So um, I think just having the, the discipline and the drive for, for whatever you're doing. Absolutely. Ryan. Um, yeah, I think I agree with all of that. And I would add uh, two things I would say. Um, Listen to criticism, listen to advice, listen to opinions. But at the end of the day, nobody knows anything. So, you know, if you really love something, if you're really passionate about something, you'll figure out a way to go about it. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a long, tough road. Um, but if you really, 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 truly love it, you, you'll you'll figure it out, and it, it won't ever feel like it's a challenge. It won't ever feel like work because it's something that you're very passionate about, and and you'll find a way to get it done. Absolutely, I love that. Well, thank 
both of you, uh, special thanks to both of you for joining today. It was, it was great speaking to both of you. I have no doubt that you're going to continue to achieve tremendous success uh, in your professional lives. Um, and I'm really excited to see where you take Moral Media next. So thanks for joining. Uh, on behalf of Susie and the Adweek team, thanks again to Blake Griffin and Ryan Coil of Mortal Media for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the Speed of Culture podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Till next time, see you soon, everyone. Take care. Speed of Culture is brought to you by Suzy as part of the Adweek Podcast Network and ACAF Creator Network. You can listen and subscribe to all Adweek's podcasts by visiting adweek.com slash podcast. To find out more about Suzy, head to suzy.com. And make sure to search for the Speed of Culture in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Click follow so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Suzy, thanks for listening. <laughs>